Okay. Let's just start off by you introducing yourself okay. to our viewers. Hi, Amanda. Um, thank you for having me today. My name is Marie Payne. I am the Director for Education and Outreach Services here at Sesame Workshop South Africa, based in Johannesburg. Okay, and then can you just kindly tell us um, what are some of the methods that are currently being used? Um, or rather, let me say, what are some of the suggestions that are available to parents out there who've got um, a little one who's starting grade one? Thank you, Amanda, for the question. So there's two things that parents can look at um, before their child goes to grade one or goes to school for the first time. The one is looking at their social emotional development. So looking at the emotions and the big feelings that children are experiencing before they adjust to this new school and this new teacher and the new friends that they're going to make. But then there's also certain skills that children need to develop before they go into grade one. And these are things like children need to learn to take turns and they need to learn to share things and they need to learn to take instructions. So these two different components that, that parents can help to develop before their children go into grade one or go to school for the first time. Okay. And why is it important um for 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 kids to learn all these skills? I mean, um we were all at some point in grade 1 and at that time there were a lot of feelings and a lot of changes that were happening. So, um why is it important for for little ones um to 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 learn these skills? So it helps them to adjust to school and it also helps them to to learn social emotional behavior. Um, they need to be able to develop the skills, not only to be able to thrive while they are in school, but also in the workplace one day. You need to be able to control your emotions. You need to be able to share things. You need to be able to collaborate. You need to be able to take instructions. So this is not only important for school, but it's also important skills that they need for the workplace one day to build them up as as a social emotional capable adults um, that knows how to deal with the emotions what is acceptable behavior and what is not okay and then can you just tell us more about um, how Takilani Sesame is playing a role in terms of making sure that um, um, young people and in this case um, little ones are comfortable with their feelings and making sure that um they assist them with getting through um, grades like um, grade one. Absolutely. So Takalani Sesame is the groundbreaking educational television show that has been around for the past 22 years. Um, we also um, do a lot of community engagement programs. Um, and our season 13 that's currently on SABC One every weekday at seven o'clock in the morning and every day of the week it's available in a different language. So while you're getting your kids ready for school, switch on SABC One and let them watch an episode of Takalani Sesame. And what is so great that season 13 that's currently on air is specifically focusing on social emotional learning. So they will see the Muppets, playing with children, experiencing a big feeling, and we will help them to identify the feeling, a coping strategy on how to overcome that feeling, and then to continue with their play. So it's an ideal opportunity, seven o'clock in the morning while they're getting ready for school, let them watch an episode of Takalani Sesame because they might just be experiencing the same feeling that they, and so the Muppets will then quickly show them how to overcome that feeling and how to be happy for the rest of the day before they go to school. Um, so we we really focus on, on social emotional learning on season 13 that's currently on SABC One at seven in the morning. Okay. And then tell me more about how you are making sure that parents um, can access this kind of information. The reason why I say that is because um, it's good that they, they, you're offering tips and um, how to go about assisting your little one, especially if they're going through that phase of starting and uh, of going to school. But now, um, how are you making sure that parents get access to this information? 
So um, 80% of our viewership of the television show is co-viewership, meaning it is viewing between a child as well as a caregiver, a parent or an adult that takes care of the child. So the parents that watch the television show with the children are also able to see um, this is the, the physical cues, this is what's happening in their body, uh, when they're feeling this feeling, either their tummy feels tight or they feel a bit anxious, their hands are sweaty. So the parent that watches with the child the, the television show would be able to pick up on these physical cues and then they will be able to have this conversation with the child to say, you know, what is this feeling that you're feeling? Maybe it's sad, maybe you're anxious. Um, and so so it, through watching the television show, it is also for the parent to help them to identify these cues and, and big feelings in a child. Okay. And then just lastly, to close off our interview, um, would you say that... Um, Shows like Takalani Sesame, um, in terms of the impact that they have on communities and um, making sure that young people um, are learning all these amazing skills and how to cope and things like that, um, would you say that shows like this are measurable? And if they are measurable, how are you making sure that you're measuring the success of a show like this? Sure, that's a wonderful question. Thank you, Amanda. So Takalani Sesame and, and Sesame Workshop globally, uh, we are known for rigorous research. So everything we do is based in a lot of research. We start off with a needs assessment. We see what is the need of families, what is the need of children, what are the issues that they are dealing with, what are the things that they are struggling with. After that, we go through content development processes, uh, we have curriculum seminar workshops, we have a lot of these meetings and convenings where we bring together government officials, the Department of Basic Education, other people working in the early childhood development space in South Africa. So we really go to a couple of experts and we bring them into one room to see what is this content going to look like? How are we going to develop this curriculum? What are we going to address in the next season? While we are busy with script writing and starting the pre-production process, we also do what we call formative testing. So we put together a little animation and we test that on families and children um, to make sure that the educational messages that we want them to, to gain after watching the episode is really, you know, getting getting through to them. So we do a lot of formative testing to see, are we on the right track? Um, are they getting the educational messages that we want them to? We also look at things like, is the songs working? Are they, when in the episode, are they kind of engaged and singing along, clapping their hands, stomping their feet? So we really observe them to see what is working and what's not working. After that, we go through the whole production process. And then after the season has aired on television, we also go through what we call an impact evaluation to make sure what is the impact and have we made a difference in the lives of these families that watch the television show. We are currently busy with a massive impact evaluation on season 13 that is currently on air. Um, so, so we do a lot of research. It's a whole cycle that we go through to really make sure that we have the impact that we want to have on, on children in South Africa. Please show them how to overcome that feeling and how to be happy for the rest of the day before they go to school. Um, so we, we really focus on, on social emotional learning on season 13 that's currently on SABC1 at 7 in the morning. Okay. And then tell me more about how you are making sure that parents um, can access this kind of information. The reason why I say that is because um, it's good that they, they, you are offering tips and um, how to go about assisting your little one, especially if they're going through that phase of starting and uh, of going to school. But now, um, how are you making sure that parents get access to this information? So 80% um, of our viewership of the television show is co-viewership, meaning it is viewing 
between a child as well as a caregiver, a parent or an adult that takes care of the child. So the parents that watch the television show with the children are also able to see um, this is the, the physical cues, this is what's happening in their body, uh, when they're feeling this feeling, either their tummy feels tight or they feel a bit anxious, their hands are sweaty. So the parent that watches with the child the, the television show would be able to pick up on these physical cues and then they will be able to have this conversation with the child to say, you know, what is this feeling that you're feeling? Maybe it's sad, maybe you're anxious. Um, and so so it, through watching the television show, it is also for the parent to help them to identify these cues and, and big feelings in a child. Okay. And then just lastly, to close off our interview, um, would you say that... Um, Shows like Takalani Sesame, um, in terms of the impact that they have on communities and um, making sure that young people um, are learning all these amazing skills and how to cope and things like that, um, would you say that shows like this are measurable? And if they are measurable, how are you making sure that you're measuring the success of a show like this? Sure, that's a wonderful question. Thank you, Amanda. So Takalani Sesame and, and Sesame Workshop globally, uh, we are known for rigorous research. So everything we do is based in a lot of research. We start off with a needs assessment. We see what is the need of families, what is the need of children, what are the issues that they are dealing with, what are the things that they are struggling with. After that, we go through content development processes. Uh, we have curriculum seminar workshops. We have a lot of these meetings and convenings where we bring together government officials, the Department of Basic Education, other people working in the early childhood development space in South Africa. So we really go to a couple of experts and we bring them into one room to see what is this content going to look like? How are we going to develop this curriculum? What are we going to address in the next season? While we are busy with script writing and starting the pre-production process, we also do what we call formative testing. So we put together a little animation and we test that on families and children um, to make sure that the educational messages that we want them to, to gain after watching the episode is really you know, getting getting through to them. So we do a lot of formative testing to see, are we on the right track? Um, are they getting the educational messages that we want them to? We also look at things like, is the songs working? Are they, when in the episode, are they kind of engaged and singing along, clapping their hands, stomping their feet? So we really observe them to see what is working and what's not working. After that, we go through the whole production process. And then after the season has aired on television, we also go through what we call an impact evaluation to make sure what is the impact and have we made a difference in the lives of these families that watch the television show. We are currently busy with a massive impact evaluation on season 13 that is currently on air. Um, so, so we do a lot of research. It's a whole cycle that we go through to really make sure that we have the impact that we want to have on, on children in South Africa.